scored all different types of goals. He could whip in a free kick, he could be a penalty box striker. Because he was so smooth, so cool, so fast, he played the game differently. If you put him on the pitch, he is the most likely player to score a goal. Hello and welcome to The Best Ever, where another debate is about to kick off. I'm Morgan Jeffrey, executive editor at RadioTimes.com, and I'm joined once again by a panel of guests. Each of them has come armed with an opinion. Their job is to convince me that their pick, and only theirs, deserves the title of the best ever. This episode, we're tackling one of the biggest questions in football. Who is the best ever Premier League goal scorer? Joining me on the panel are Nader Manua, former Manchester City defender and ESPN pundit. Adam Summerton, football commentator at TNT Sports. And Michael Potts, RadioTimes.com's sport editor. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, Nadam, you'll have played with and against some fantastic goal scorers and you've scored some pretty wonderful goals That's yourself. very generous. That's very, very generous. <laughs> but I do appreciate that, yeah. Are there particular moments from your time on the pitch that have stayed with you? That I've done myself? Mm. Um, yeah, the, they ended up being one or two. And one of them was getting the chance to play at Wembley. It was a playoff final in 2014. And I didn't really realise how big an opportunity it was until we won the playoff semi-final. And we brought out the banner saying, we're going to Wembley. And I remember seeing that for so many years and thinking, oh, there's nothing, nothing major. But that feel of knowing that you're going to that place to play in such a big game and then to win it. You know, it's one of the best, uh, one of the best days of my life. Yeah, I'd say that's the biggest one. Adam, from your position, having worked as a commentator for over 10 years, what are the qualities you've witnessed in players that make them a top striker? Well, I think longevity is probably one of the best judges of a, of a player. Um, obviously, with the striker, it's the amount of goals as well. Uh, goals to game ratio. I think you can look at all sorts of things, um, how natural a finisher they are, um, how all round player they are as well. I think you know, sometimes people want more from a centre forward than just scoring goals. You know, they might want them to drop deep, they might want them to go wide. So I think there's a lot that come, come into it. But I'd say judging a player, longevity probably has to be the, the key thing, I think. Michael, for you, how easy or difficult was it to pick, in your opinion, the best ever Premier League goal scorer? Yep. I think this boils down to two. I had two names in my head from the start. Um, I'm going into bat for one who I'm very, very confident about. I look forward to chatting with these gentlemen about our choices. Maybe the other one's going to come up. Uh, yeah, I think it's a, it's a really tricky one, as, as Adam was saying. Like, what are you looking for from, from, a, from a striker, from mm. a forward? And the answer is, I think, goals above all else. That's why we're here today. Um, yeah, I think there's some tremendous goal scorers in the Premier League era, and uh, mine's obviously the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> Fighting talk. Wow, okay. Well, don't forget, today's winner will also get to lift our coveted best ever trophy. Think of it as the FA Cup of sporting debate. <laughs> So, Nadam, let's get into it. Who, in your opinion, is the best ever Premier League goal scorer? So, as Michael was saying, there have been so many great goal scorers across so many years. I've been lucky enough to play with a couple of them. But one who I never played with, but adored when I was first falling in love with the Premier League, getting a chance to play in the Premier League, and then watching from a distance, Thierry Henry. I think he, for me, is the best, and my case for him I could do this, I could carry on forever. And I think I might do. Because as I look back, I see the importance that he was, that he had for Arsenal in those early years. And this is kind of early Premier League years to that next stage, to the fact that people wanted to buy Reynolds because of Mr. Vavavum, you know. This is, <laughs> this is how important Wider Henry cultural was. cultural impact. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And I think he made Arsenal cool, whilst also making them pretty uh, dominant around that time as well, yeah. I mean, whether or not he's the best ever, we'll come on to, but certainly one of the greatest strikers of all time, one of the greatest players in Premier League history. Arsenal's all-time leading scorer with 228 goals mm -hmm. in all competitions, won two FA Cups, two Premier League titles with the club, won the Golden Boot a record four times. H however... That's not bad. However... <laughs> you say four times. <laughs> okay, please carry on, please carry on. Never He's doing your job for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. However, I, I, have a, the defense. I have a yeah. caveat. Never won the Ballon d'Or. The closest he claimed was uh, runner-up in 2003. Does that disqualify him from this title? Being the best Premier League's best ever goal scorer. Yeah. Never won the Ballon d'Or. Yeah. How many Premier League players have won the Ballon d'Or whilst being in the Premier League? Good question. The answer is likely zero. Mm. 
So I don't think that should be used as something against me. <laughs> but that I obviously would say that. But I think uh, we've got some. There are way more stats than that. They're going to make my case, and that's just a little just to warm you up. But please, fire I've away. got some too. Yeah. Well, we, 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 we should address the elephant in the room if we're talking about Premier League goal scorers, which is Alan Shearer. So Alan Shearer is the all-time top Premier League goal scorer, 260 goals. Does that not mean that he wins this outright? No. no. Tell me I'm wrong. I, I, I think he'd be pretty upset to hear <laughs> that he hasn't won it. And he'd have a very good case. But I, I just think, again, I go back to what I said earlier. It depends how you define it. And mm. everyone will have a different view on that. Um, for me, my choice is Wayne Rooney, um, who I think, I mean, just a fabulous footballer. I just love the contrast with Rooney as well, because he was a, a real street fighter mm. um, type foot, street footballer, mm. raging bull of a centre forward. Um, but he also had that sort of, there was a deafness of touch about him at times as well. And Rooney could do everything. Rooney could drop deep. You could play Rooney any position on the pitch and he'd probably be the best player on the pitch. Mm. He could drop into midfield. He could pull wide. He would sometimes, um, he would maybe sacrifice parts of his game to help another player in the team. I think of Ronaldo really when that comes to mind. I felt Rooney sacrificed himself at times so other players could maybe get goals. So the, the, there's so many stats around him as well that, that you could talk about third highest Premier League goal scorer, third for assists as well, which is un unbelievable to be third on both. Mm. Um, five Premier League titles, Manchester United's record goal scorer. Um, there's, there's a lot. There's a, a lot to, to like about Wayne Rooney. Well, that's everything. <laughs> <laughs> you could go on forever. He's yes, already done. He's done yeah. Rooney scored more total goals, goals than Henri, but Henri has a superior goals per game ratio, indicating higher efficiency. So Rooney around 0.4 goals per game, Henri 0.6. Does that not mean that Henri is a superior well, goal scorer? No, obviously. But uh, <laughs> there is another point. I think as of now, Henri's got the best goals to minutes ratio as well. Mm. Oh, sorry, sorry, second best. I think um, someone on this panel might be able to mention who the best is. For Henri, I think it's one goal every 122 minutes. Rudy did it over 16 seasons, though. So how many goals That's... would Henri have if he had 16 seasons in the well, Premier League? Well, I mean, it's a question I asked myself about Rooney as well, because he finished in the Premier League when he was 32. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, Shearer played till he was 35 in the Premier League. Mm. So there's always... Listen, Henri yeah. came at 21, I think he left at 28, 29. Yeah. So it, there's more. The goals to game ratio is, is persuasive, but... I, you it's know, the start more, of my argument, don't more, worry, there's more, more to come. There's more, more goals, to come. There's more there's assists. More, there's more, there's there's more to come. There's how, more to come. How much do you look into how many Premier League titles? Was it two for Henri? It was two. How many invincible seasons did Rooney have? No invincible. Oh, no problem then, no problem. But five what? Premier League titles no is pretty... That's, that, but that's a good point. So that, that ability to maintain, that was integral uh, to Arsenal's Invincibles season and Henri's contribution to that. Did Wayne Rooney make as significant a contribution to Man United? Uh, so I'm going to bat for you on this one because I was somebody who came through a similar sort of time to Rooney. I remember there was a point where I went to, I was asked to go to an FA Youth Cup game and just be just an extra player. I was 15, 16 years old. And we were playing against, they were playing against Everton. And they said, oh, this is meant to be this youngster. He's supposed to be pretty good. He's like 16, he's supposed to be pretty good. I was like, oh, I'm sure it'll be all right. It was Wayne Rooney as a 16-year-old playing against 18-year-olds, dominating everybody. A few weeks later, he's making his debut for Everton, scoring that goal against Arsenal. And he is one of the best talents I've ever seen. He's one of the toughest players, if not the toughest player I ever played against. But all the things that you're, the points that you're making, they go, beyond him just being a goal scorer. And this show is about the goal scorer. Well, I, I actually think it's funny you should mention that because I, in preparing for this, I watched a lot of Rooney's goals. And I think it, as a finisher, you hear that phrase, natural finisher. Robbie Fowler is probably a player who mm. that said a lot about. I actually think Rooney was a more natural finisher than he was given credit for, actually. Mm. Mm. He scored all different types of goals. He could whip in a free kick. He could, he could be a penalty box striker. He could be maybe playing from wide and come in. He could just do a little flick. He, he, he had such a wide variety of goals. Mm -hmm. And I think that maybe that gets overlooked a little bit. I, with th Rooney. I think the thing with Rooney as well is when, 
I'm just letting this debate play out because it's fruitless when I bring out my <laughs> no, Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Okay. But, but with Rooney, the thing with Rooney is he, he played in so many different positions as well. I mean, there was yeah. times he'd pop about wide, he'd pop deep, he'd be, I mean, he was dropping so deep into midfield at times that, so I think I'm trying to strengthen your point here. Well, that I, actually, yeah. in terms of goal scoring, if he was the centre forward, if he was the central striker for, you know, the, the vast majority of the time, yeah. he probably would have more goals probably would have fewer assists, but he probably would be higher up in these goal scoring charts. Probably so made a lot of his, a... his strike partners better as well. I mean, yes. I think of players like Van Nistelrooy, for example, um, Louis Saha, he played up front with as well, Van Persie, albeit fairly briefly. I know his favourite strike partner to play with was Tevez. Mm -hmm. And feeding off what you've said there, the reason for that was, it was like you said, with everybody else that he played with, he was the 10 and they were the nine. Whereas when he played with Tevez, they would switch. So he would become the nine, Tevez would drop. Yeah. Talking about Rooney's versatility though, Henri could find the back of the net in, in many different ways. Yeah, so talk, if we're going to talk about Rooney's versatility, we should probably talk about how he's playing like midfield by the end of his career as well. And I think that's because maybe him playing further up wasn't as good an option for him. Maybe physically that didn't suit his, his game at that point because with Rooney as well, he's also one of the best passers we've seen. You know, the short, long balls in behind. But Thierry Henry, Thierry, Thierry Henry. <laughs> Firstly, the player, like Rooney himself, can you, well, he probably could have done, but Thierry Henry can play across any, any sort of generation of Premier League players, in my opinion. Because as you look at him from what he was, he has the, he has the skill, he has the running on and off the ball, he has the speed, he has the touch, has the finesse. We're talking about a player, you talk about versatility. You know, when we see like Ward Prowse whipping free kicks, it always reminds me that who, the person who scored the third most free kicks in the Premier League era is Thierry Henry. He's sitting there on 12. You know, this is something that I forget. But then also, you know, you take, he, I think, don't think he missed the league penalty with Arsenal, scored 23 of them. And when he scores, you picture his goal, you see the ones for Rooney. If the ball is being played through and Thierry Henry is running through, I'm not sure if some of you remember this, but it's almost like he trademarked the finish just low to the keeper's left. Yeah. I'll tell you what else he had. That knee slide celebration, just running off to the corner. <laughs> you know, and Henri wins the cool factor. We're not getting, we're not getting over that. Like and it's probably there. cooler because we saw it so many times. Rooney had the one where he got knocked out. And he felt yeah, bad. exactly. <laughs> exactly. And when we, when we see so many like celebrations these days, like you forget that the knee slide was almost made cool by him. Mm. You know, he inspired so many people to try and have that finish, to try and like, this is a guy that could dribble from his own box and score like he did against Spurs, did it like against Liverpool. He had, he had that, he could play, he ended up also obviously going outside the Premier League and playing for Barcelona in a system which would suit Messi, so he was selfless as well, mm. which is something I never thought. And for Thierry, I think the stats are like 250 odd games, 170 something odd goals and 80 assists. That's a goal contribution per game. His, his finishing, you mentioned it there, I think one of these shows of like Henri's 100 Premier League goal, first 100 goals, I think it's, it rolls around sometimes on TV and I remember watching it once, it was almost metronomic. Yes. Like you're saying like low down to the keeper's left. Yeah. Just slotting into that bottom right corner with, I mean, it was, it was, it was, I don't want to say robotic because he was such a colorful footballer to, to watch and to, you know, exuberant style to watch him and, and play with. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was just, he was ruthless, mm -hmm. ruthlessly efficient. Um, and yeah, that, that technique doesn't just come out of nowhere. Like he, it's, he, he's, he's the most that. elegant and graceful Sure. footballer I've mm. seen live in the Premier League. I yeah. mean, I, you, you to look abroad, I've been and seen Messi and, you know, mm. there's, for me, there's nobody that, that beats him, but the, what, he was so graceful, wasn't he? Yeah. And, and yeah. you forget, you forget like how young he was when he first came over and then also the era that he played in, because when you think, when I think of him for Arsenal, I don't necessarily think of him playing with Tony Adams and Ray Parler and like Sasa Lukic potentially in goal and stuff, because I think of him further along that, that journey when you know he's got Burkamps, he's got Fabregas playing behind and stuff like this, but he went across those eras. Mm. It's, it's such a long time ago, but Thierry Henry played for Arsenal in the 90s, but then he was also very much there when they were at the Emirates as well. And for me, like I say, I'm, I'm very biased because the way that he was and what he stood for at, at Arsenal meant that a lot of people would have them as like the second team that they supported. <laughs> and it's because he was so smooth, so cool, so fast, he played the game differently. And all that difference that he had then, in my mind, would work perfectly now. And I wish he would have stayed in the Premier League for longer because obviously we're seeing discussions about Kane, will he come back, will he break Shearer's record, is it 260? Thierry Henry at 175, leaving the Premier League in his 20s, for me, he's got a very good chance of 
you know, making it to that, it. especially given the fact he started when he was 21 years old. Mm. So that's, yeah. that's part of my argument. Well, I'm continuing. Michael. It's time. Henri, Rooney, unquestionably two of the best ever. Uh, can you possibly hope to compete? <laughs> so, um, I, I would like to throw into the debate. Kevin Phillips. <laughs> no, okay. I'd right love there. to throw Kevin Phillips in there. I mean, it's obviously the right answer, but I need to give you a chance. Honourable mention. Uh, Honourable mention. Um, no, I would like to throw in probably the most undervalued, underappreciated, I would say football, it's certainly in the Premier League era, potentially in world football of the last couple of decades. Um, it's the man, it's Sergio Aguero. Okay. Um, he is an unbelievable goal scorer, as we all know. Um, I think made even more impressive by the time that he spent off the pitch. Mm. Um, so the, obviously the thing with Aguero is that he, he suffered from lots, lots of injury problems. Mm. He, he didn't, so I think he only played over 30 games on a few occasions mm. throughout his 10 years in the Premier League. Uh, but when you, it was funny you mentioned earlier about the minutes per goal. I, I listen, I know. Gary yeah, sitting on number two there. I wonder who's number one. Um, <laughs> we have Sergio Aguero, one goal every 108 minutes across well, 10 years. Yeah. And I think the stat that I saw when he, when he left Man City, there was a, a, a tweet posted out there saying he could have played 28 more games, full games, the equivalent of I think it was two and a half thousand minutes, without scoring a single goal, and he would still be number one in that minutes, minutes uh, per goal. Yeah. ratio. I know it's not all about stats, we'll come on to some other aspects of his game, but in terms of sheer stats, he is the most likely player in Premier League history. If you put him on the pitch, he is the most likely player to score a goal in Premier League history. But if, we're, talk but if we're talking about goals per game, so his goal per game average was 0 0.669, if you want to get really technical. <laughs> um, better than Rooney, round about on par with Harry Kane, still not as good as Thierry Henry. Minutes per game, yeah, sure. Like, you know, Henri, Henri robust. So you, you, you played, you played all the games. Your a little bit. You started off <laughs> no, so well. No, no, no. <laughs> it, I think it's more impressive that Aguero could come back from these injury problems, that he could be, you know, be taken out games on the hour mark and sort of come back the next day and, and still, or next match and put in a performance. Being out for those months, being out for weeks, if it was a serious injury, if it was a, you know, a little niggle or a knock, he could still come back and just pick up where he left off. And so, yeah, get the game goals per game, that fair play, fair play. But I think minutes, minutes per goal, um, it, it almost heightens his, his, his greatness. The fact mm. that he could get injured, he could take up these knocks, he could be withdrawn out of games and still, or come on, or come on as a sub occasionally and still find the net in any circumstance. And what was his contribution to Man City's domestic success the same as what? Rooney contributed to Man United, or, or what? Yeah, what I mean, Henry gave to Arsenal. Yeah, I mean, I think I mean f five Premier League titles for Sergio Aguero um, to Man City. In again, he sort of arrived near the start of their transition to becoming sort of well, going from one thing to becoming a global superpower. Um, he didn't win the Europe uh, European Cups or anything with Man City, which I don't think takes him down a peg in the Premier League goal scorer rankings. Um, but five Premier League titles, I mean, what more can we want from a striker than to win the league in one in every two seasons he was in the Premier League? Uh, he didn't get the individual honours as well. I think, again, we, a lot of individual honours uh, sometimes to do with, you know, it is very stats-based. And I think if you'd added five or six games under each of Aguero's totals, he, he, I think the maximum he played was 34 games in a season. So obviously mm. that's going to that's gonna bring down his, his season tallies. He never got 30 goals in a season. Um, I think if you'd added five or six games onto each of his seasons, which is very reasonable to do had he been fit, um, I think you could have, he would have won far more in the individual is, awards. Is he making a case for or against Aguero here? <laughs> I'm very confused by this. But despite, yeah. despite those injuries, 20 or more goals in five separate seasons, that's still incredibly consistent. Unbelievable. He was doing this coming back from injury and still scoring 25 goals. Let's just anyway. play a game just for a second, yeah? <laughs> I don't want to play if games If your never. players scored 30 goals in the Premier League, stick your hands up, in a season. Okay, it's just me. So if your player has managed to achieve <laughs> 20 assists in a season as well, stick your hand up. <laughs> Somehow that's just me again. Well, is this the best it Premier League assist creator or is this <laughs> Premier League goal scorer? No, no, well, okay. if you're going to talk goal scorer, then the 30 goals, that can be the first point. <laughs> But yep. I'm just I'm just going to extend well, these I mean, to I you. Mean, I understand what you guys are saying, but it's just say, not valid. Um, 
you could put your hand up at who won the most Premier League titles, who scored the most Premier League goals, who made the most Premier League assists, who made the most Premier League appearances, and who made the most Premier League goal contributions. Okay. Press the red button there. Really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so, so this is so this is an interesting one because all those stats are true, but they're all true because he's had longer to do it. Mm. And that's the point. The, 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 one where, the one where I'd hold my hand up the most with you two is the goals per game ratio. Because I yep. think Rooney was, was it, you probably got it there, was it 0.4 no, was or it? something? 0.4. So that's, that's, that's the one where I, but, but I've just reeled off a pretty impressive. But we're yes. talking goal scorers, so. Things out, so. Talking goal scorers. It's interesting because I, I do appreciate, and I think I've probably gone quite heavy on the, uh, anticipating the, but he hasn't got 30 goals in a season line of uh, questioning. But. Do you think it's interesting when we do talk about longevity, how much that plays into it? And, oh, it's massive. Uh, you know, at the start of a career, if you knew that Aguero was going to miss, I think it was 100 games he missed out of nearly 400, sort of a quarter of the games he wasn't actually available for over mm -hmm. that 10 years. It is interesting when you talk about longevity, how much that feeds into a player. But then again, would would somebody be going into bat for Alan Shearer? Yeah, today? it's true. Yeah. And we, we could have picked anyone, really. Alan's going to be fuming. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Listen, it, it, yeah, this is going to go out and it, it's what it is. five years. <laughs> I think what the three players have in common is that they're all massive for their football clubs through the time that they were there. Yeah. Yeah. Like we're yeah. talking about Aguero as a statue outside of their stadium. You're yeah. talking about Henri, who was one of the biggest pieces in them becoming as successful as Arsenal were for that time, and Rooney himself. You know, this is the prodigy that is the all-time go top goalscorer for one of the biggest football clubs in the world. But when we're talking, we're talking generally about players now. But if we're talking about goal scorers. I think those stats and stuff, they do matter. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Henri's got four golden boots. Yeah. We're talking about a Premier League goal scorer. Like, that speaks for itself. Mm. We could talk about style of play, finishing this, that, and the other. But he did it. And say, like, we never really potentially saw how good he could have potentially been if he stayed longer because he's leaving in his late 20s. Mm. These days, you see people be in those early 30s and really have a grasp of what football is. Well, Radio Times audience has also been having their say on this topic across Facebook, X and threads. The results of our fan poll are in. Uh, so at number five, with 5% 5 of the vote, hotly contested, it's Sergio Aguero. Uh, at number four, with 6% of the vote, you mentioned him, Robbie Fowler. Ooh, at, num at number three, with 10% of the vote, Harry Kane. At number two, with 13% of the vote, Thierry Henry. So Shearer as well, and, it's definitely not really. And at number one, with a staggering 45% of the vote, I guess they're just going by total goals scored, it's, it's Alan Shearer. Um, the remaining well, 20... don't we look silly. <laughs> <laughs> the remaining 21% was made up of many votes for many other goal scorers, including Erling Haaland, of course, uh, Eric Cantona and Gareth Bale. Um, okay. Interesting. We'll keep your eyes peeled uh, to Radio Times social feeds for more best ever polls coming soon but the time has now come to find out which of you has put it in the back of the net Nadim, you argued that Thierry Henry was the best ever Premier League goal scorer Adam you were backing Wayne Rooney Michael your man Sergio Aguero who is today's winner and the recipient of our best ever trophy it's tough I mean all three unquestionably three of the best ever, but who is the best ever? I have to say, ultimately, I think the numbers don't lie. I think you do have to go by goals. And yes, Shearer scored the most goals, but if we're looking at the goal per game ratio, and then on top of that, on top of that, you consider the consistency and creativity and flair on the pitch. I'm gonna say today, the best ever Premier League goal scorer is officially Thierry Oh, of course it is. <laughs> ba -ba <-boom. laughs> of course. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Perfect. you very much. And thank you, Thierry, for all those memories. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Do you know, it feels exactly like I expected it to. You know, I feel great. I had the best pick, I made the best argument, and now I've got the best trophy because he is the best ever. So it feels good. I think I put a pretty strong case for Wayne Rooney. Um, you know, as I said earlier, had scored more goals than any of the other contenders. Third most Premier League goals ever, third most assists, a real all-rounder, could do it all, could play in all the different positions. Just a fabulous footballer. Minutes per goal, 108 minutes for a goal over 10 years. It's a ridiculous record from Aguero. When he was on the pitch, he scored. I was robbed. Thanks for joining us for this episode of The Best Ever. What did you make 
of our verdict. And who do you think is the best ever Premier League goal scorer? Let us know on X at Radio Times. We're bringing you new episodes of the best ever weekly, so be sure to head to radiotimes.com forward slash the best ever for all the latest news and exclusive content from each new episode. If you're listening to the podcast, you can also subscribe and review the best ever on your podcast outlet of choice. That's all for now, but join us again soon for more of the best ever.